When you render your Rhino models with Flamingo NXT, you'll be using a completely new version of Flamingo. After making sure that Flamingo NXT is the current render engine, you'll see a Flamingo NXT drop-down menu. Here, select Control Panel. In Control Panel, you have Materials, Lighting, Environment, and Render. You can drag this around or dock it wherever you'd like, and Flamingo NXT will remember its location the next time Rhino is launched. In the Materials tab, you can start with a preset material, and any of these can be edited, or you can click on the folder icon to display an existing library of Flamingo materials. In the Lighting tab, you have a predefined high dynamic range environment set as the sky image. You can click on this image to change it to a different .hdr file. This lighting setup is part of the studio lighting preset, and from the drop-down list, you can choose from other presets. Exterior, for instance, would turn on the sun. In the environment tab, you can turn on an infinite ground plane and even change its elevation in the scene. You can also customize the visible background type. By default, it's set to color, but you can use the existing sky or load an image of your own. In the render tab, you can choose the dimensions that the rendering should be. You can do total pixels, the viewport resolution, or pick a width and height for the image size. Depth of field can also be turned on, and you can pick a spot in the scene that you'd like to be in focus. The Render tab also gives you control over the render engine that NXT will be using. You have the default render engine and also the path tracer. For this video tutorial, I'll be using the model you see here of a fishing reel. If you'd like to follow along, you can do so by downloading this model from the link provided with the video. The first thing I'd like to do is get a feel for the default settings of Flamingo NXT. So I'm going to make Render Front the active viewport and just click Render. You could also type the command Render, and Flamingo NXT will start calculating the result. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video tutorial, NXT works differently than previous versions of Flamingo, and in this way, NXT will continue to calculate this rendering until you tell it to stop, and you can do that through a time limitation or a number of passes limitation. NXT will create softer and softer shadows the longer you let it calculate, and you'll notice that especially in areas uh, occluded by other geometry, such as on the interior of the fishing reel. I'm going to stop the ray trace, and the first thing that I need to do here is assign materials to the fishing reel model. So I'm going to close the render window, and I'm going to start to make some materials in the Flamingo NXT control panel. This model is separated into different materials by layer, so I'm going to display the Layers dialog, and I'll close properties here just to save some space. The first portion of the model that I will assign a material to will be the bushing and washer layer, and I'm just going to work my way down. So this first object is just right there next to the handle, and I'm going to make a basic new solid color material. And this material doesn't have um, a real shiny quality to it, and it's by default this very light gray color. I'm going to just slide the color down here and make this a darker gray. And then I'll click on Advanced, and I'm going to change the intensity slider a little bit, just to bump it up in reflectivity. And I'm going to change the name of it while I'm in the editor here, and we'll name it Bushing. And then I'll say OK. And then you can right-click over this material swatch and choose Assign to Layer and pick the bushing and washer layer. And I'm going to do the same for every layer here, so we'll try and do this quickly for you. The external body objects are these two on the side, colored green in the shaded mode. And we're going to create a new plastic material. I'll stay in the green family of color and say OK. And if you forget to type the name or change an attribute that you meant to, just double click on it and the editor will come back up again and you can name it accordingly. So external body will be the name of this one. 
and then don't forget to assign it to the appropriate layer. And then next are the grips, and I'll make them out of a new plastic material as well. And this new plastic material is going to be almost entirely black. And I'm going to click on Advanced, and I'm going to change the intensity and sharpness values for this material while I'm in the editor. Intensity is how reflective it is, and sharpness is how rough it is. So all the way to the right, and you're going to be able to see the reflections pretty clearly, and to the left it gets rougher and rougher on that sharpness scale. So I'll say OK to that. And then I will right click over that material swatch and choose Assign to Layer and pick the Grips layer. For the handle, I'm going to start with a default metal material. And I'll just slide the sharpness slider back a little to the left here, and that's going to scuff up the reflections. And that's all I'm going to do. That's just going to make it look a little bit more worn and used. And I'll double click on that because I forgot to name it, and we'll just call it Handle, same as the layer that it is destined for. And then right click over it, Assign to Layer, and Handle. For the internal body, I'm going to start with a duplicate of the material used for the external body. So I'll go over into the Materials tab and right click over the external body. Material Swatch and choose Duplicate. And then I'll rename this to be Int Body or Internal Body. And I'll assign it to the appropriate layer. For the metal parts, it's a collection of all the different pieces that will be metal. We'll start with the new metal material. And I'm just going to scuff it up a little bit. Say OK. And for the rod, we'll make a new clear finish material. Make it almost entirely black. And don't forget to name it. For the grip on the rods, I will create a new solid color material so it won't have any reflection. Uh, but maybe we'll add a texture to it. So click on Advanced. And I'm going to name this before I forget again. So Rod Grips. And then I'm going to add a texture to it, but not with an image which I could load into one of these slots, but with a procedural pattern. And you've got a couple different options here for the type of texture that you can get from one of these. And you can add them on top of each other or use them separately. And I think I'm going to use Rubble. And if you select Rubble, you can change the scale here, but I'm just going to leave it at these default settings and see what it looks like first. This will change depending on how big your model is and apply this. And the rod handle is that bit there. And let's just do a new clear finish material. That one's called Rod Handle. For the cork handle, we have an image to apply. So we're going to create just a basic new solid color material, and then click on Advanced. And I'll name it while I'm here, Cork Handle. 
And then in textures, instead of using the procedural pattern, this time I'm actually going to click in one of these texture slots, and I'll pick that cork image, and that's in the download of the fishing reel file. And the texture properties dialog pops up. We can change scale, but again, I want to leave this as is for now and just check it out on the model. The size of the model will influence whether or not this width or height is too big or too small. And apply that to the cork handle, handle layer. For the spool, I'm going to use a metal material as my template. I'm going to make it a darker metal and I'm going to scuff it up a little bit. And name it Spool. And for the wire guide, I'll use a default plastic material. And maybe I'll just make it a different color entirely. And now I'll select the render front viewport and do a test render. So as our rendering progresses here, we'll get a pass count and we'll also get a counter for time, elapsed time for the render. And the purpose of this first test render is to see if anything jumps right out at me in terms of changing the material. And, and the first thing is, is this rubble texture, the scale of it on the rod grips material. So I'm going to stop the ray trace and I'll double click on the rod grip material swatch. and go into the texture section and again I'm still in the advanced controls that's why I can see this advanced options and select rubble and change the scale of it I'm gonna change it to like four then go back to main and raise the intensity a little bit and scuff up the reflections a little bit and then do another render And I think uh, the next change that I'll probably make is, is the handles here. I want those to look a little bit softer so that they wouldn't slip out of your, your fingers. So I'm going to roughen up that and probably decrease the intensity a little bit, decrease the reflection. So open up grips. Now you want to do your test renders like I'm doing now at a small enough resolution that they happen quickly uh, and then set your final output resolution width and height before you uh, do the final render. And that's really um, I think the smartest way to go about it. Uh, we might want to adjust this inner housing to taste. Maybe it's a different color. You remember I used the duplicate of the external housing but for now I'll just leave this as is. Next, in the Environment tab, I'll enable the ground plane. And I want to create a material for the ground plane, so I'll click in the Material channel, and then the drop-down list for New Solid Color Material. I'm going to name it Ground, and then I'll click on the Advanced button, go into Textures, 
and click on one of the image-based textures. And I'll load that Deckwood image that came with the downloaded fishing reel file. And here we could adjust the width and height in the texture properties, but I'll accept the defaults and just say OK. And OK again. And you can see now that that material channel says ground. So it's the material we just made. And if we go back over to the material tab, ground is right there as well. So this is applied to the infinite ground plane. And then I'll do another render and see how that looks. And now our model looks like it's more exterior. One thing we could add here is the sun. And I think that'll be our next step. That'll make this more of an exterior shot. So I'll stop the ray trace and go into lighting. And our preset is where we want to make this change. So right now we have studio lighting, which is really just this high dynamic range environment. And from the drop down list, we can pick exterior daylight. Now what this is going to do is it's going to change our sub tabs for the lighting preset. And now we have sun and sky and advanced. And these have default values. So the sun by default is on for the exterior daylight preset. And the sky by default is set to auto, which is a clean color gradient, kind of like an artificial sky. And from this drop down list, we could pick HDRI, which would remember the high dynamic range image from the previous lighting preset. So I'm going to do that so that we get the reflections of our high dynamic range forest environment. And we also get the hard shadows and bright highlights of the sun. And I'll click another test render here and see how this looks. And already I can tell that I want to rotate the sun so that the shadow is more in the back of the image. And hopefully we get some highlights here on the front of the housing. So I'll stop that ray trace. And I'll go into the sun settings. And we're going to change the position of the sun manually. I'm just going to swing it around like that. So it's pointing the other direction. And do another render. Now we can keep tweaking these materials, like that interior housing, for instance, could be a different color. But we can also adjust the image for brightness, burn, saturation right now in the editor while it's, while it's rendering. So I'm going to raise the brightness a little bit here. Raise the burn. And after about 12, 13 passes, that doesn't look too bad. And it's only into it one minute at the moment. So I'll stop that rendering. Now one more thing that we'll do in this basic introduction to NXT is I think we'll apply some depth of field. So we'll make the back of this image look a little bit blurry. Now I can close this NXT render window and these brightness and burn values that I set in making this image uh, a little bit brighter these will stick the next time I do a rendering so we'll close this and in the render tab we can enable depth of field and then click pick to pick a location to be in focus in the scene and I have my object snaps on there so any point on the front of the housing should do and you'll see that update the focal distance amount in the depth of field section. And then I'll do a final test render. And now the depth of field will also be calculated over time. 
So the blurriness out of focus in the background of the image, that will slowly get smoother and smoother over time as well as the shadow is getting smoother. Now we can also open the Adjust Image section and see that the brightness and burn values are the same as when I previously adjusted them, so you don't have to worry about those going away if you're running a, an animation, for instance. So I'll stop that ray trace, and now I could set a different width and height for the image and render my final. And that concludes this introduction to Flamingo NXT for Rhino.